Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. Let's kick this video off discussing AMD's FSR 2.0. That's right, the company have actually disclosed a ton of information of this upcoming technology, and it is actually really exciting. So FSR1 was a spatial upscaler which actually found a lot of success in the marketplace. While its quality wasn't as good as, say, NVIDIA's DLSS, overall it was easy to implement, it was available on games consoles, and honestly, it just kind of worked. But of course, as always, technology moves on, and it was pretty obvious, to be fair, that AMD were looking to release a new form of upscaler which would offer much better image quality, and that's what we have now. Now, I'm going to be going much deeper into FSR 2.0 over the coming days and weeks, especially as games start to emerge and uh, various other things. They actually have a GDC presentation now, and I'm going through it, and there's going to be some other really cool content as well. Uh, but quite honestly, there is just so much happening right with GDC that I want to give you guys the Cliff Notes version, particularly given XCSS has also been disclosed as well as how that works with ray tracing so i figured i'd put this video out so you guys can have kind of a comparison point between the two technologies now really important thing is that xbox series consoles will actually work with um fsr 2.0 they haven't actually said any games are shipping at the moment, and they haven't mentioned, of course, games at the moment which are going to be shipping with the technology, but basically it's going to be baked into the Xbox's GDK. The really obvious question is, what about Sony? No idea. Um, technically speaking, the PlayStation has absolutely no reason it shouldn't work with FSR 2.0. I mean, quite literally, it should easily be able to function. Uh, if you actually look at the GPU supported list of FSR 2.0, it works on RDNA 1, RDNA 2, GeForce, uh, GTX 10 series, and so on and so on. But Sony are not mentioning anything. So whether it's part of their GDK or their development kit, their SDK more accurately, I honestly have absolutely no clue. Uh, technically, it can be supported, but remember, even FSR 1 could actually run on the Switch. I think there was like one game maybe that used that. I can't remember. Um, so yeah, with Xbox, though, they have officially confirmed that they will be using it. One thing I suspect is that Sony are just being really coy because another thing as well is that they've got their own upsampling tech that they're pushing really heavily, like their own like you know checkerboard solutions and all of this stuff and a lot of temporal solutions. And if my info on the PlayStation 5 Pro is also accurate, apparently that's got its own thing as well. And its solution is actually different to what AMD are using. I don't know. Microsoft, of course, also have their own stuff with their own upsampling tech, which who knows? Like, there's a lot of really cool stuff happening in the game industry right now. But for FSR 2, though, AMD have already shown a couple of demos. And honestly, it looks pretty good. Now, of course, there is no machine learning ML hardware at all. It is not used here. Furthermore, it is not specific to uh, DirectX either. It can, of course, run on something like Vulkan, and it's relatively easy to implement, although Vulkan support will be coming a little later. You can also see a comparison of how long it takes to upsample from uh, the lower resolution to the higher resolution, uh, utilizing different GPUs here. So, for example, uh, at 4K, using a 6800 XT, it's about 1.1 millisecond. And a 1080p on something like a 5700 XT, it's around uh, about, well, about half a millisecond, which is still pretty impressive. Again, this is going to run on a really wide range of hardware. And as for graphics cards, uh, the support is pretty impressive. I mean, again, it's going to run on AMD cards, NVIDIA cards. So, for example, for 4K, you could use something like an RTX 3070. There are different quality modes. Uh, you can see some of them on screen with Deathloop and some other really cool slides that AMD have put together. But obviously, these are all based upon scaling factors. So, basically speaking... Um, if we look at the quality mode, for example, with a 4K output, we're going to be looking at uh, 1440p, 
Whereas on the other hand, if we are performance orientated, then uh, it's going to be 1080p. So basically what you're doing is scaling, of course, the image from that lower resolution output to the higher resolution output. And again, this is all temporal based. It's not using machine learning at all. And it does look really impressive in motion. It will be really curious though how all of this plays out because you know, just to echo what I said at the beginning, Intel are also getting in on the act with XCSS. We'll go into some specifics in a moment of its presentation. But if you're not so familiar with XCSS, basically a lot of what I just said about FSR, you know, with the fact it will run on different hardware and all of that stuff, it's basically, you know, can run on Intel, NVIDIA, uh, AMD hardware is pretty much identical. The difference is it's kind of like DLSS in that it utilizes machine learning to do this. Now, there is some differences in how instructions are handled um, depending on whether it's an Intel Arc GPU. And yeah, I'm wearing this. I know it's a little small for me, but it was literally something Intel sent over. It's the largest size and uh, it just looks cool. And given I'm covering XCSS finally, I just I wanted to wear it, okay? It was a little small for me, but I wanted to wear it. So just just, just leave me be. Um, but yeah, when it comes to XCSS, um, there's going to be a lot of questions on how NVIDIA tends to, or oh, sorry, plans to rival this because ultimately they're both utilizing neural networks and a lot of other stuff. I'm hearing DLSS 3 is still in the works. It makes sense because DLSS 1 was released, then we had 2. I think we could see that, you know, we've seen iterations of DLSS 2. Now it's on like 2. Point, is it 2.3, 2.4? I can't remember offhand. But yeah, long story short, they continue to, of course, improve it. So what new information do we have of XESS? I want to give credit to WCCF for a pretty in-depth report here. So, of course, I will link their uh, article in the video description. Again, I will be going much deeper into this uh, in the not too distant future. I've already put out kind of an overview of XCSS. I actually worked with Intel and I worked with uh, AMD on an FSR1 video. So you guys can check them out if you want on the channel. But yeah, um, the technology behind XCSS is basically reconstructing the low resolution frame to a high resolution frame, as you can see in this first slide here. It's DirectX 12 based, so who knows how that's going to work with a different API. And you can also see that they've provided different rendering performance metrics. Now, unfortunately, we can't you know, you can't do a sneaky, which is what I was kind of hoping to do, and then use this to kind of figure out how fast um, their GPUs are. Uh, so you can't do any sneakers. There's no sneakers available here, unfortunately. But they have put together a couple of different uh, graphs here with different uh, benchmark criteria. So, for example, they've been running with different quality settings and at ray tracing, different resolutions, and so on and so on. Ultimately, it's going to be a real battle, I think, for upsampling. And that might sound like I'm kind of overselling that, but I really want you guys to think of this because it's going to be a really important marketing and... You know what? It's it a really, really cheesy way of putting it, but he who controls the spice and all of that, you know... And in a way, the upsampling technology is quite similar. Like, look how NVIDIA have been using DLSS to market RTX, particularly with DLSS 2.0x. You know, and I think we can all agree that it has been a massive selling point, along with ray tracing, but yeah, DLSS in particular, I think for a lot of folks, of RTX cards. And certainly FSR is going to, or FSR 2 is going to be quite interesting. Um, but XESS also really has the ability to change that. I suspect NVIDIA will have to adopt to market conditions, let's say. And I'm not saying that as a leak. I don't know if uh, NVIDIA will open up DLSS. I don't know what direction they're going to go. But I think there's a lot of... Uh, I think NVIDIA are going to be doing some stuff. I don't think that they're just going to keep going the direction that they are in, you know, the distant future. I suspect that there's going to be some really big changes um, to, their, to their marketing strategies, particularly as the RTX 40 series of cards launches. 
And yeah, I mean, RTX 40, RX 7000 series, they're all going to be absolutely absurdly powerful. But again, it's just the way that things are baked in. This is kind of a guess, but I suspect just from what Intel have been doing in terms of how it's been discussing things with games developers, the marketing that they've been using for their laptops, you know, all of this other stuff, my suspicion is that the marketing budgets and, you know, how, uh, you, you know, you had like uh, NVIDIA the way it's meant to be played when, you know, you're loading a PC game or Radeon or whatever, I suspect that we're going to see a lot of that from Intel. I suspect that they're going to be throwing a lot of marketing power at this problem. And it's going to be really interesting to see how all of that plays out. Because again, you know, Intel may not have the fastest cards when Arc launches. Again, they're apparently around 3070, 3070 Ti at best levels. Um, once the drivers and all of that stuff get sorted out, I suspect they'll do pretty well. However, A, they're setting themselves up for much more powerful future generations. Obviously, they've already released their own roadmaps and all. And B, you know, at the end of the day, Intel, it's not just about, you know, desktops. It's about laptops. It's about the whole... It's about the whole gamut, uh, sorry, gamut of user experience. It's going to be really interesting. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. I will see you soon. If you've enjoyed it, you know what to do. Leave a likey on the video and subscribe, of course, if you're not already, because it's YouTube and that's what I have to say to you. Take care of yourselves and bye for now.